All right, welcome to Nigerian Meadows. This is our barn setup. I was recently asked if I would share what we're doing. Keeping in mind that we have lived here three months and none of this existed when we moved here, um, just kind of keep in mind how things go. In front of us, we have a gate and that gives us a courtyard for entering. It lines up with a big garage door for our main barn. This allows me to back my truck up and unload hay directly in. Um, I keep everything kind of localized. This is a budding chicken coop, which will have a pen, garden. You can see I've got posts I'm getting ready to put in. Behind the garden will be a chicken run that's covered due to all these nice trees and the resident hawks. We have to keep it uh, run covered. Eventually ducks will be down in the behind it and um, kind of keeping all this local and uh, right around here. So. We've got our barn, we've got a compost pile in the corner here. I bring uh, bedding out here and it goes in the compost pile from there. It'll be able to enter the garden. Um, this is our little courtyard. It's going to have a garden bed here. We can pull in and when we fix the gate up correctly, uh, right now it's got it's busted and being held up by wire. <laughs> Fancy. Um, Anyway, we'll be able to close this gate so that when we unload animals or have to load them, we don't have to go through a whole bunch of trials. Over here, we'll have a gate where we can drive right into the goat pasture. Um, we have electric fencing at the top of our fence. We've got a red brand horse fence down below. Um, this is Bane, our livestock guardian dog. Here you can see the fencing, maybe. Anyway all the debris from building right now. Over here is the buck pen. I'll start you out with that. Um, we keep a couple of bucks. I've separated it into two pens for breeding. They're small, but they're adequate. This was what we started with as our building. We had to house the does when we moved. It is a uh, 12 by 24 foot shed, three-sided. Um, over here I built a divider wall between my two buildings so that uh, my bucks don't fight right through the fence. Inside I have a quickly made, it's tied up, futon frame. This becomes, um, this is my hay feeder and I have chaffe down there. Down here are kid doors. I can actually turn this into a place for mamas and their babies with a stall. Um, I didn't want to attach anything to the building. We weren't sure if this was going to be permanent. So I built a system for holding everything up. Um, over here you can see that I have my stall and gate over here. Uh, over here is the other buck pen, mineral feeder. Uh, they've got buckets. Hey, rascal. Yeah, hey, big boy. And he's got about the same amount of space, except that the he's actually got the bigger pen, um, being a bigger goat. Where I'd put does in, I'd put the does over there and kind of see around. Um, this over on the other side is where I've got the dog's quarters. He's allowed to have his own space. Um, I feed him in there. I lock him up when I need to. So. You can see that this shed is a lot smaller than the big barn. My big barn is 40, about 45 feet long, 48 feet by 35, I believe it was. And it's 12 feet tall at the peak. Um, all my gates can be pushed. The goats can't come through. Uh, I find that to be really handy. I've never had goats opening my gates because if they stand on it to undo the latch, well, they can't open. They can't pull as well as open the latch. So far. Okay. Moving on from there, I'm going to open my garage door, which can be locked. Not that I have it locked. So, oops. 12 foot peak, 9 foot side walls. I can build. Um, eventually, I want to build a porch off on this side for the does. This is, um, we've got it set up in such a way that we can actually split up the pasture. Um, there's two doors over here. I can split which side. I can have two different pens, a small one, encompassing this area with its own door and divide the inside of the barn. 
so that I can house whoever I need to on this side and then I can have the main area um, for the rest of the herd. Pardon the mess. Uh, obviously I'm still working and still having to store everything. Um, this is going to be my storage for feed. I've got uh, Stanley alfalfa and Timothy alfalfa pellets stacked up on pallets over here. Um, we are adding a loft. Was, I wanted a taller building, but we couldn't You raise it any higher than the 12-foot peak, and price gets much, much higher. There has to be more support, and um, it's just a lot harder, more expensive to do. So we stuck with this. It's tall enough for me to walk boot, uh, stooped over up there. That's where I'm storing wood. I can store hay. I'll take a quick gander up there for you. Uh, I built a set of steps. There's going to be a rail on it eventually. Here we go. So those are square bales. You can see down there. Um, it's sort of expensive, but it makes use of space. And actually down below, there's plenty of room to add a shelf unit right in there for whatever I need to store. This is a kidding stall. There's going to be more going down this length on the inside of the pen. Quick overview from above. This is my milk room. It's eventually going to be closed in. I'm probably going to close it in from the stairs over. Let's see, I can just back right up here, pull my truck pretty much in. If I ever get the ramps done, I could actually bring it in and we can unload. Um, right now, I have Chaffee in that corner. The Chaffee will eventually be moved the next time. Um, this side had not had as much done and I was using it for storage. But where the Chaffee sits is going to be a small bathroom with a composting toilet. That way um, I can use it for guests without having everyone truck up to my house. Um, there will be a wall there where the feed bins are coming out and I will move both my milk stands in. Um, I have, let's see, weave my way down my stairs. That's the Nigerian milk stand. Down here is my full goat stand sitting on the floor because my goat seemed to have trouble getting on and off after she had kid. Her hips were loose and anyway, this is easier. I just sit down on the edge and milk. She's tall enough for it. Um, we access this first kidding stall from under the stairs. At the lower part, there's going to be drawers installed. So eventually we'll be able to just pull a drawer out, you know, smaller drawer at the top, bigger drawer, bigger drawer. Um, and I'm going to build a different gate that I can swing both ways. This one's too tall. And the gate to the dough pen. This is my chalkboard for keeping notes when I'm out here. I can transfer them to other stuff. I have my microscope for doing fecals, my scale, a uh, cabinetry that is eventually going to have locks on it to store things. Um, that's where I keep all my medical stuff. Uh, the double doors are for goats, small doors, my chicken area, and eventually I have more cabinetry in here. The wall will get a pegboard where I can hang tools, different things. Right now I'm just hanging stuff where I can. Um, there will be a sink in here with a hot water right there at the source. The sink will go in the corner. I'll have a spigot so I can fill buckets. Um, Anyway, that's my fancy setup at this point. Inside my dough pen, you'll see I have a lot of space. Actually, it's more space than I truly need. The goats do enjoy it. Um, it's a lot to clean. It's a lot to maintain if you don't actually need all of it. And they do mess it all up. You can see this panel. We had to quickly set up a kidding pen. It's 10 by 10, um, approximately, maybe a little bit bigger than that. That is for the, um, when the Nubian had her babies, we put her in there, so it's a nice large pen. It won't work for my Nigerians because they go right through the cattle panels. <laughs> um, but eventually this whole side is going to have stalls. The stalls can be left open when I don't need them or I can close the goats up. I can have, oh, one, two, three, four, I'll have at least four kidding stalls where I can set my goats in. My latches, I like these. It doesn't push in and out. It's really, really strong to put this kind of latch in. And I just hang a lock on it or something. See? Holds up really nice to pretty Bella who likes to climb and peek out. Yeah, get down. All right. 
there was special interest in the um, way I did a hay feeder. I'll tell you right now that this, the trough on this is 16 inches. It needed to be 14 inches because goats can lay in it, especially the smaller goats. You'll notice that my Nigerians step up on this bar that I put down in order to get to the hay. However, full-size goats can reach it very well. Um, I th it's set at just over a Nigerian's back height, so approximately 25 inches for the trough. The, um, the actual tray is about 21, 22 inches, and then the 2x4 that comes across the front puts it up about 25 inches. This is a futon frame. Um, all I did was I came in here and I put a 2x4 down along the inside edge. Girls, I'm not giving you anything. I put it, I bolted it on, put metal screws in. Thanks, girls. Um, one at the top, one at the bottom. This allowed me to have a framework which I could attach sidewalls to. I have one strong post going down, then I attach at the back. Um, and I put plywood on the sides. Because the goats can get in the tray, I'm going to have to put a 2x4 uh, or something right across here so that they can't climb in it and lay down. Um, the bars are wide enough that they can get their heads in, which means if a goat bashes them, we could have a broken neck. And that is something that I'm really concerned about. One of the reasons that I don't want them to be able to access it too easily. Another advantage of it is it's where all the babies sleep. Underneath it's usually clean and dry. No one pees under it. No one poops under it. That's where all the hay waste goes for the most part. So I really like that. All the hay on the ground is all their, their mess where they've tracked it. So um, anyway, you can see mineral feeder over there putting up new ones pretty soon. Uh, to attach wood to these metal frame buildings, you just use a, um, a metal screw and you drill a hole through and run it in. And it's pretty strong. Here is my barn door. This is a 4x4 four four door. Eventually I'm going to have a top section. The openings are only about a 6 foot opening. The 8 foot would have gone all the way to the top. We decided that since I'm putting a loft in, we don't actually need it to go that high. We want to keep it contained unless I choose to do something different. So for now it's just like this and I guess that's where we're going to leave it. Um, to latch it, I use these little uh, you can see this. It works really well. And I just put metal screws to attach it there. Um, over here, I had to bolt the hinges on. You can see how I have it going right through. And then it opens up real nice. Uh, I open it inside. I don't like my doors to hang open in the sunshine. Good morning, Bane. Oh, don't go back there. Come on, sweetie. There you go, Mal. Look how technical I am. I hold it open with a cement block. Fancy that. Anyway, <laughs> my fancy door consists of a barn siding panel, which I put 1x4s around. I made my framework, cut the corners, 45 degree angle. Um, I use glue, liquid nails actually, and then I screwed it all together from the back side. Uh, you have to kind of clamp it together in order to put this, you know, turn it over and all that. But it turned out really nice. It's really strong. It stays straight. Um, I haven't finished painting it completely yet. It'll be it's just primed right now. Um, eventually, I'm going to have ramps at both of these doors. You see I have a futon frame and a gate over there, too. Um, I like my futons. They're cheap to free, especially when they don't have any mattresses. Just people that want to get rid of them. So, uh... Anyway, I just have it zip tied on. But this will allow me, actually, I can take a divider and I can split my barn in half, which means I have two sides for does. I could have non-pregnant on one side, pregnant on the other, whatever. My ramp has chicken ladder style out of scraps. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of scraps. Um, here you can see I have the two doors. This is the corner of the building, so you can see I could just run a fence line right from this door and across, and I have a nice big pasture for whichever small group I want here. The goats tend to hang out right here. They don't really do much in the whole pasture, so, uh... <laughs> anyway, 
my group of goats. Um, there's going to be automatic waterers inside and outside for owl pens, eventually. Dog pen. I want to make that a little bit bigger so that when I have him locked up, he's not tucked in a tight space. A big old pasture. We're going to be putting some fencing across to, pretty close to where I'm standing right now, where this play equipment is. And um, some friends are going to come out and till it for us. And then we're going to plant some pasture seed. This has just been used for a lawn, so it's not very nutritious. Um, we want to increase the productiveness of it for forage since it's all we have. Um, all these woods out here are pretty much swamp. Um, anyway, that's our handy dandy barn. I'm hoping it answers all the questions that have been asked and is, I don't know, informative. As long as you don't mind the fact it's all kind of a mess. Well, eventually, maybe it'll look really nice. <laughs> Frisky this morning. That looked like it hurt. Yeah, I gotta show my goats off. I'm happy with my herd. And the goats really like the grass pieces. This is where they lie. This is where I was going to put the porch. I'm going to extend it all the way across here. Um, put about a 10 foot lean-to on here easily. And give them a place to rest because obviously there's no shade and the sun comes up in the summertime and it's really hot. And this building is going to be really, really hot if I don't do something. Um, it's really easy to put windows in these things. You just cut them out, so I'm going to probably do that for some airflow, back side and front side. Um, I don't know. guess that's all. Nigerian Meadows, signing off.